This piece is called Life Shouldn't Be This Hard by K.L. Belvin. It's not supposed to be this rough. Standing in a crowd of people feeling like Miss Seeley, wondering is God trying to tell me something? Or am I really Sugar Avery and my father don't want nothing to do with me? Why has society transformed into Mr. doing his business on me while asking me to lay there and take it? Been told I was a king, but taught to fake it until I make it. So if you don't make it, has your life been real? This is crazy. Head full of dreams, heart full of hope, and pockets lined with the results of what people know about me. Nothing. A dollar and a dream. What happens when you don't have either at the same time? You're now asked out of even the legal hustle, unable to come up. This explains why brothers head back to the streets. Yet that blood, that regal blood of mine, but you have been saved by God and are here for a purpose bloodline. It holds me in place each time. It keeps me striving, wanting more of something I've never had. It's sick when you think about it, almost absurd, but in the end, this is what dreaming is all about. They say if the mind can perceive it, a man can achieve it. This sucks, since I have perceived along with millions of others just enough to be happy, not elated or ecstatic, just happy, yet the world won't give in. See, when men back in the day created those thought-provoking lines, they weren't poets. They wanted something slick to say, and it allowed them to shape the thoughts of the weaker mind. When you tell a poet to perceive, dare to dream, or speak it into existence, he does so. Then when it doesn't line up right, here comes the venom. There is something many don't understand. Pain is magic to a poet. He will cleverly craft concoctions for the consciousness in a literal context simply to keep others at bay while he transforms the world around him. Society may be squatting over me, ready to defecate, but when the tables turn and you look to marvel at the negative state you have attempted to create, I was never there to begin with. It was my words which led you to believe I would accept the crappy position you were trying to place me in. You see, a poet's power is his connection to the words. All life is made of words. Adam was given the power to name all which was around him. So he was the first true wordsmith. Since that time, many have lost the skills, and in others it lays dormant. But ah, you forgot the evil one, the rejected one, the snake to many, the epitome of desires, the greatest twister of words. He is the one that picked up Adam's mic, and from that day has spit lyrics like the Pied Piper, and our souls have danced away like the children of legend. But the Most High counted, breathed life into each poet, asking them to take on the task of being Adam-like. So ordered to spit life into things which before were nameless or replaced. Now you understand while I ask, was it supposed to be this hard when so much godly talent has been placed into man's hands? Allow me to dream, for when I'm done, I'm going to speak into this world something new and if given enough time I'll place a name to some things which will change the world forever because life shouldn't be this hard by K.L. Belvin. God bless.